The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. It's a great game, but you already know that. That's why you clicked on this video. Or maybe you just wanted to see some tips and tricks for Breath of the Wild. I'll be honest, you probably know all of these, but I still wanted to make a video on the subject. Actually, I couldn't stop playing long enough to make the video. Uh, while getting this footage, I got distracted several times and ended up with three hours of the stuff. Anyways, let's get into it. Have you ever found yourself needing a certain flavor of choo-choo jelly but didn't want to go track down the respective choo-choo? Just shoot a plain choo-choo with the elemental arrow of your choice, fire arrows for red choo jelly, ice for white, and shock for yellow. Speaking of arrows, don't you hate having to waste one of your special arrows because you ran out of your regular arrows? Now, this trick is slow and a little outdated, but early on in the game it can be pretty useful. All you need is a wooden shield and an enemy who will fire arrows at you. Just stand there with your shield up and catch the arrows. When you withdraw your shield, you will pick up the arrows and put them in your inventory. Guardians can be pretty intimidating at first, but once you realize you can parry their beams back at them, they aren't so bad. Master the timing, and you will have no issues. When a Guardian is about to fire his beam, a sound effect will play to signify that it's coming. When you hear that, that's when you parry. Practice makes perfect. What's that, Pooch? I'm sure you've seen this hint on a loading screen, but how exactly do you get the dog to lead you somewhere? Just feed the dog four pieces of raw meat and it will lead you to some hidden treasure nearby. Cuckoos. The only thing Link can't kill, so why not have them fight on your side? You can carry a cuckoo into battle and have the enemy attack them. But after a failed attempt, I had to learn that cuckoos take four hits before they call for backup. Also, they lay eggs, so make sure you hit your chicken three times and then take it into battle.
guardians again, but these ones are on the move. Let's fix that. Sure, you could get in close with a weapon, but why not take your loyal steed instead? Nothing feels more epic than charging head first into a guardian and flipping it over. This makes fighting them easier. Just know that this is extremely dangerous and you run the risk of killing your horse, like I did. All is not lost, for there is a fairy who will bring your horse back from the dead. Just go to the lake tower and follow the nearby path south, and you will end up at the Highland Stable. Keep going south until you find the Horse God Bridge. Follow the path and you will find what appears to be a great fairy fountain. After paying 1,000 rupees, you will restore the Great Fairy, and you can ask for the revival of your horse. Look, I'm sorry, it was for the video. Dumbass! One thousand rupees is a lot, considering nobody grows rupees anymore. There is an easy way to make rupees fast, though. Make your way to Pondo's Lodge, located near Hebra Tower. Here you can play a bowling minigame for 20 rupees. If you get a strike, you are given 300 rupees. A 280 rupee profit in a matter of seconds. There is a spot you can stand in that gets you a strike almost every time. Also, as long as you knock down most of the pins, you win your money back, if not more. Have you ever been looking out over the Lake Hylia when suddenly... What the f- What is that? Can I ride it? More importantly, can I eat it? That is Feroche, one of three wyvern-like creatures in Hyrule. No, you can't ride it. As for eating it, well, you could cook with its parts, but I'm sure there are better uses for the parts that drop from Feroche. 
Depending on where you hit Farouche will decide what it drops. If you hit its horn, its fang, or claw, it will drop a bit of what you hit respectively. Hit anywhere else, and you get a scale. These parts are very valuable. Here is how to farm for them. Before we farm, I suggest you bring the following things. Wood. Flint. A sword, to start the fire. A bow, preferably one that zooms and shoots far, such as a golden bow, but any bow will work. And arrows, as many as you think you will need. Now that you have all of that, let's get started. Travel to the top of the lake tower. Once there, set up a campfire and sit until night. Now it will be 9 p.m. Now we wait until it becomes 11.50 p.m. Save your game. When you resume, you want to fly towards the bridge. Land on the top and you should see... nothing. That's okay. Reload your file from on top of the lake tower and repeat. Eventually, Farouche will appear. Now guess what we do? We wait for Farouche to get close. When close, jump off and glide towards Farouche until you feel comfortable. Don't worry about your stamina too much. If you put your glider away and then bring it back out again, as long as you catch the updraft Farouche creates, your stamina will be replenished. Now all you have to do is take out your bow and take aim at the part of the body you desire a part of. Who wrote this? Well, that's it. Just wait for the part to shoot off, most likely into the water, and the shooting star appeared. Well, gotta get that. A shooting star yields a star fragment, which is pretty rare. To my knowledge, they fall on nights of a full moon more frequently than other phases of the moon. And if you don't make it to their location before dawn, they disappear. Back to Farouche. We just do the same setup as before, and now we are ready to farm. Well, that about does it for this video. Did you learn anything new? I hope that at the very least you found it entertaining. If you liked the video, hit that like button, leave a comment, and maybe even subscribe. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.